Good afternoon, everyone. This is Noshi Mukhtar, and you're watching the Power Talk Show. And today with me is Rahaf Raif Kadesi, my friend. And we are going to talk about different things, things that are very important, but we do not think about them consciously most of the time. And that's the reason we fail to set reasonable boundaries and we fail to have a, a healthier personal space. So, welcome to the show, Rahaf. How are you? Thank you. Hi, Nashni, and happy Thursday. <laughs> Thank you. Tomorrow is the weekend. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's great. So, how how is everything on your side? And what are we talking about today? So, things on my side are doing great. And today we're going to talk about a very important topic, which is boundaries. How to set healthy boundaries. Yes, very true. So, um... <laughs> Why do you think we need to set boundaries? What is a toxic person? Well, two completely different questions, but boundaries is very important to establish our own identity. And it's very important that helps us to protect our well-being and mental health. So, and there are plenty of types of boundaries. People think that it's just one type, but it's more than one. So you have physical boundaries, you have intellectual boundaries, emotional boundaries, um, sexual boundaries, and time boundaries. So basically, regardless of the type of the boundary, once you mm. set them in a healthy way where they don't get too loose or they don't get too rigid, that's where we create our balance and our healthier relationships. Uh, it has to True. fall somewhere in between. Now, how to do that with a toxic person, it's very important at the beginning to be very aware of how we treat ourselves. So right. that comes from a place of being compassionate and kind to ourselves. Hmm. That will explain why we are setting boundaries at the, at the first place. Because a lot of people, I was one of them, I used to feel guilty and I used to shame myself to set any kind of boundary. What if the person uh, did not like what I said, how would they react? What the, so when we are pas compassionate and kind to ourselves, it will become easier to go and tell that toxic person, hey, listen, um, I'm not comfortable anymore with, and you fill in the blank. Hmm. I appreciate if you respect my decision. By, by saying that phrase, machine, one, you have told them that you're not comfortable doing whatever it is anymore which means yeah. I know I used to do that in the past, but I'm not doing mm. that in the present or the future. And mm. then I'm not comfortable. You are expressing why you're, you're, you're setting that boundary. I would yeah. appreciate if you respect my decision, which means you have no say in this. This is not on your call, it's mine. So if you want to stay in my life, you have to respect my decision. True. This is basically, the brief or the introduction of what are why is it important to have boundaries, to have boundaries. and one example of how to set them yeah so ladies and gentlemen Raf Kubesi is one of the wonderful mental health coaches in Dubai she has been helping business owners in setting wonderful boundaries and staying healthy in sustaining their uh, health and in encouraging them to take care of themselves uh, she is with us today to talk about how we can stop people from stepping over boundaries. She will tell us how to deal with toxic people. She will tell us how to deal with people who are bringing in negativity. And before we go on and proceed with our discussion, I want you guys to introduce yourself, say hi in the comments, and tell us where you are joining us from. What are different questions that are coming right now to your mind? Please have your question coming in. We want you to participate and be interactive in the discussion. And here is one quick question from Muhammad Jahangir. He says, how can we control ourselves after the negative people interact with us? Okay, so maybe he should be, he could give us more examples to be more precise. That's a very general question. Um, what do you mean by controlling yourself? So the way I saw or the way I heard the question could be emotion control. Um, I would really encourage once a negative person gives us a reaction that is really unhelpful or unhealthy, the first step would be 
to take a step back and to take a breath and think of how we want to react. So that takes us from being impulsive to being intentional of how we react to someone. Because a lot of one game changer, and this is something that I work with my clients on, Nusheen, is that once we accept and once we learn the fact that whatever people react to our actions or our sayings, that's on them. That is a reflection, pure reflection of who they are and where they are at, not us. Once we establish that fact and we come to accept it, our emotional intelligence will increase and will improve and we will be able to be very selective. We can choose our emotional reactions rather than, that, than just let them control us. So I think, Muhammad, the first step would be just to be aware of your emotion. What am I feeling? And don't just label it as a good or bad. No, be very specific. Um, are you feeling sad? Are you feeling hurt? Are you feeling guilty? Once you establish that emotion, then step back, take a breath, and decide how you'd like to behave. Usually, working with a professional would help you to, to get the tools and the skills to be a master in that, but you can always um, just breathe and, and be selective with your emotions. Right, that was very helpful, Rahaf. You know, in social settings, there are judgment machines, walking, talking, judgment machines. People yeah. who are Remember out there to, to undermine others, people who are out there to tell them, you cannot do this. You cannot do that. You have not done this yeah. yet. You will never be able to succeed, and so on and so forth. That's very true. So, but because this, this comes from our culture and the way we were raised. So once we break that pattern as individuals, it will help other generations and other people to just be themselves in a healthier way. So if you come across someone who's judgmental, by your compassion and by your kindness and by your emotional intelligence, you can basically set a boundary to that person and you can learn from you how to stop being judgmental. Exactly. So that also is a kind of setting a boundary. Okay, when it comes to correcting, like a lot of people try to correct us all the time. How do we respond to such correcting behaviors? Do you, do you believe correcting behavior can be sometimes negative and can demotivate and overwhelm people? So could you give me an example of that? For example, a boss who is always starting a morning with lots of reprimands and is having those reprimands in, in order to correct people, thinking that if he gives them this kind of negative feedback in the morning, they are going to have a better, more productive day. How to deal with such situation? Uh, wow, that's a very good question. Well, listen, um, a lot of scientific researches have proven that when you praise your employees, because you, you mentioned a boss, so I'm, I'm assuming it's a work environment. When you praise your employees or your team, uh, they would improve their performance and they will be more productive. While when you criticize them, even if they were employees of the month, their performance will just hold back and, and go lower. So if a manager chooses to correct or keeps on giving comments to their employees, it wouldn't be beneficial to his company. The way to deal with it is one, either to, uh, what I would do, <laughs> um, not escalated, but take it to the higher management and say, listen, our manager is really just highlighting our flaws instead of maybe directing us to the right path. We would like to learn. We would like to know how we could improve our performance or our skills, or maybe even have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with that manager is, I'm here to serve the company and I'm here to do whatever is best for my team, but I would really appreciate if you could just let me know how can I improve my performance without really letting me down. And the manager would, his reaction should not be dictate how you react in the future. So your choice is either to stay or not, but it's your duty to basically communicate what's bothering you because sometimes, and this is, I have seen a lot of times, the manager won't know that this is a toxic behavior because he thinks he's leading his team. When someone points it out in the right way, like, listen, 
I really appreciate your guidance. I really appreciate everything you've done to me. But the way you basically convey the message in the mornings, I don't want to start my day on a bad note or on a bad vibe because that would affect my performance, hence our relationship as a boss and an employee. So how can we work this out? For example, um, setting boundaries at work is very important. The fact that he is the manager doesn't make him the emperor of the company you can still talk to him so it's very important that the culture of having conversations with the management becomes normal normalize communicating what bothers you as an employee from the manager's behaviors and his way of management so i don't know if that answers your question yes yes it certainly answers the question there is one more question from muhammad tariq islam tarikul islam Rana. he says how to love negative people? Why would you want to love negative people? <laughs> I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't because there is certainly no reason. To block, have. block, block. <laughs> no need to have negative people around you. Block those negative have people. Or, or, or if you really love those negative people, maybe be it friends or family members, help them, help them get help. For them to or if your positive. friends all of a sudden have become negative and they were not negative before and now they have become intensely negative and that's impacting you it's better for you wow. to have a talk with them that's a that's and, a very very important oh my god exactly. yes so, so, so in you, that need to, case, you need to yeah. work consciously and try to understand what could be the reason behind this a hundred percent because your keyword here the distinction here is suddenly if your friend is a bubbly character and he is a positive person in nature and suddenly he became negative it could be one of two things either he is being surrounded with negative people so he could be working with a negative team at work he could be having negative family members at home he could be hanging out with negative friends. And those three, because we spend most of our times with, we become the people we hang out with. That could be one reason. The second reason, it could be that that person or that friend, he is having troubles with his mental health, more stressed, more anxious, maybe he's depressed, maybe he's having uh, some kind of illnesses and he's really not opening up and he's not getting the support that he needs. So. In that case, if it was the latter, our job as his surroundings is to check in and to see if we could help them. Because if someone suddenly became a negative person, like I could know, you know how positive I am. If I catch myself being someone who's complaining all the time, I would say, wait a second, I need to relax, I need to recharge. So checking in on our friends and ourselves is part of setting boundaries as well. Yes, absolutely true. And it's important for us to make other people understand that we have a value system that allows us to have some boundaries, some very important wow. boundaries that they cannot cross. And those values define the kind of behavior we can tolerate. So, 100%. So, so there are two kinds of boundaries. One yeah. that are non-negotiable. Non I will not negotiate on those. And one, <laughs> list, which is, yes, there are boundaries. We can negotiate and we can compromise, but it depends on the situation or it, it depends on the person or something like that. So, for example, what are your non-negotiable machines? Um, one of my non-negotiables is that I don't want to be questioned by every second person. No way. So, I, so since I'm my own master and I make my own decisions, I don't like being questioned at all. Independence. Okay, that's nice. My non-negotiable, don't invade my space. When I ask for space, give it to okay. me and don't ask me why I'm asking for it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure. That makes you very independent. I need my space. So True. that I would suggest and what I would encourage as a first step to set boundaries is to have that uncomfortable conversation. Is that, listen, these are not my boundaries. If you are talking with a business partner or a friend, um, even a relationship partner, romantic partner, it's very important to have that conversation. Hey, listen, so here's where I stand in something. And, and 
how would you like us to communicate in the future on that? So I'm someone who likes my space or I'm someone who doesn't like to be told what to do or to be questioned when I'm making decisions. Are you okay with that? And having those conversations, Nusheen, at the beginning of any kind of relationship really saves the hassle of getting into toxic toxicity in any situation because you've already made that clear. Now, if we have not done that conversation or we have not yet made that conversation in the beginning and something happened, it's okay to actually say, okay, listen, so we really did not have that topic covered. So let's have that conversation. I know that this is coming out of love, whether it was a business partner. So I'm assuming there are two types of partners, business and romantic, and it goes for both. Um, uh, you have done this with me and I'm really not comfortable. So could we just not do that in the future? Very so that simple. Is, that is very subtle and clear communication. Very you simple. You need to convey what you're feeling and thinking and what you want people 100%. to do so that they yeah. are clear boundaries. Yes, 100%. But it's very important as well. Do not say you did this or you did that. Right. So if I'm coming to the to express a kind of something that you've done that overcrossed my boundary, I would come to you and say, Christine, remember when you came to me and you did this? So it made me feel uncomfortable. Right. What can we do so we can avoid that in the future? So I did not really point out any finger at you. I just told you that this kind of very specific behavior mm. is really bothering me. So I expressed how I felt about it. This on its own, if we use that script, just take it. What you did was, uh, what you did made me feel uncomfortable. So let's do, let's find a way, middle ground, or stop doing it or whatever. This will solve all of our problems. <laughs> all of them, you know? How yes. that person reacts is not your responsibility at all. True. And, and in the way that you find toxic, Yes. You can cut up the relationship. And you are all, always in charge of who you choose to interact with and what you want to interact about. And and this is your right. Like, you can easily distance yourself from a toxic person whenever you feel like it's getting up to you and is bothering you. You can always draw the line. All you need to do is just be conscious of when exactly to draw the line and when to shut your doors so that they don't impact you. Identifying your limits. Just identify your limits. And this is basically what helps you maintain a healthy relationship or a healthy friendship. So to give you an example, um, what you can find acceptable in any kind of relationship, I might not, I might I might find it unacceptable so let's say um which used to happen with me a lot i a friend would come and tell me let's hang out let's do something and i would say i'm busy let's do it maybe in another time and they keep texting and they keep on calling so they're not taking my no seriously and they're not taking no for an answer and that is a violation of my boundary so so don't you feel that this is this is going to lead to conflicts no, because basically when you stick to your boundaries and people still do not respect it, it means they're really not your people. And it's a waste of energy and it's a waste of time and it's a waste of everything to help them understand your boundary because you can give them many chances, of course, it depends. But you don't want to be mean, but at the same time, you don't want to be loose and you don't want to reach a point where you get a burnout or you get a nervous breakdown or whatever it is because at some point if your skills emotional management skills are really not strong you could start projecting this pain projecting this hurt or tiredness or fatigue on that person or on someone else so be aware of what your limits are what are your boundaries and stick to them of course respectfully but be aware and stick to your boundaries how to avoid conflicts when we are setting boundaries? Communication. Just have the proper communication. And to communicate on your boundaries, there are very basic rules, basically. One is always have that conversation face-to-face.
face-to-face, do not have it over WhatsApp, over a text, um, have it face-to-face -face because it will, it will make a difference. And the thing that you can do is be very mindful of your body language, don't be too stiff, don't be too, um, I don't, I, I don't want to use that word, but try to be confident in your body language without looking hesitant. Um, your tone should be very calm and very comforting instead of being um, bossy in your tone. Um, these two things, Nusheen, even though people might think they're very simple, but they are game changers and they will change everything. So use a confident body language, a very calm tone of voice, because your message will be better and well received when you do all of that. And if you think that you need some kind of rehearsing, plan ahead what you're going to say to that person. Because for you to ask me, I wanna have that conversation to avoid conflict, which means that person is already choosing to misunderstand you. So plan it ahead, have a re rehearsal in your mind what do you want to say and how do you want to say it? Um, this can help you me feel more confident while you say it. But also keep in mind that that person's reaction to what you're saying is not your responsibility. Yeah, and, and it's quite uh, I, it's quite normal, Rahaf, to see that there are there will be a lot of people and there must be a lot of people around you who just refuse to accept your boundaries. They do not have any respect for your boundaries at all, yeah, and they keep on overstepping. Off. Exactly. Cut them so, off. In, yeah, cutting them off is one way, but having some negotiable boundaries is another way. So, for yourself, let's share what are some negotiable boundaries. Well, it depends from one person to another. So, these are this is when you decide to compromise only, only when you think it's the right thing to do. Uh, try to listen to that person's needs what are his requirements and you get to, to decide to compromise or not you know if you want to take up that boundary and make it a negotiable one because at the end of the day every relationship whether it's at, at work friendship or even a romantic relationship it's give and take um or else it wouldn't be a healthy relationship so one of my non-negotiable one my negotiable boundary uh, maybe it could be uh, when someone does something wrong with me, instead of cutting them off, I would listen more to them. Maybe I would give another chance to not have a repeated behavior and I will communicate it accordingly. So if that, that behavior was repeated again or again, I would just cut them off. That could be, a, at the beginning it was a non-negotiable for me, now it is. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> right. So, how do boundaries help in uh, relationships, in fostering relationships? Um, well, it will give you a healthy relationship. So, every relationship, when we're speaking about a healthy one, of course, what do you want to feel in that relationship? Most of the people or most of the couples would come and tell you, I want to feel safe. I want to feel valued. I want to feel supported. I want to I want to be able to have my privacy and what is that um, I have created I want them to be respected uh, I want to be listened to uh, I want my feelings to all it, um, that my partner would respect my no when I say it and that when my needs are met so these are the things that we want from a relationship once one of those things are not provided that's when you know you have to have a conversation about it and try to have the um the right time because one 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 common issue that, that happens with the couples in a relationship is that they say the right things at the right at the wrong time and they're trying for example a lot of my clients would come to me but i asked him to do that when did you ask him to do that it could be when he's just came back from work or before sleep or when he's really not in a very good mood or vice versa so just have the, the the conversation and know the language of your partner so in a way that you do not offend him offend him and at the same time you want to be 
not strict, but you want to be very straightforward. This is what I'm not accepting in this relationship. And this is what I will not no, no longer tolerate. Um, if you give me an example, I, I would be happy to elaborate on, but it's basically everything just about communication. Right. We are waiting for you guys to give us an example for our relationship. Communication and comprehension. Okay. The communication. Because I could communicate to you, but you, could, you, you won't really understand what I'm saying. So that's pointless communication. <laughs> exactly. So knowing your partner can actually work very well. If you know, know the person you are dealing with and you're going to set the boundaries for, you will be in a better position to have a healthier relationship. Because there will be some understanding through comprehension, like Rahaf is saying. All right. Well, what about yeah. willingness? What about willingness? Like you, you were sharing, your friends are unwilling to accept that you're not coming today. So willingness yeah. also plays a, a large part in setting and sustaining boundaries and in making people accept those boundaries. I'm going to share with you a, a story. That's a true story that has happened with me like nine years ago. I was in a relationship and my romantic partner used to ask me for space and I couldn't understand why would he ask me for space so I refused to give that space to him because I thought I could be an alternative <laughs> for that space I could give him anything that he needs but it's not that I was not willing to give that space I did not know the importance of space why would he need it and I really was not aware so answering your question, there are two types of people who do not respect our boundaries. One, who are not willing and they're very, they come from a very um, insecure place and they need really support and help from a professional to, you know, heal their um, wounds or their issues. And second type would be they are willing, but they really don't know how and they don't know the importance of what you're asking. That's why I was really just emphasizing and highlighting the importance of communication. So in a relationship, it's very important to ask millions of questions. But the most important one would be, did you share all of your personal boundaries with me? If not, what are they? Let's go through them. That's very important. And I can guarantee you, Nusheen, 80 to 85 percent of the couples, they do not do that. And then conflict happens and then relationship problems gets into the picture and yes, I agree. And, and all of that. Yeah. yeah, and even Farooq is saying there should be adjustments from both sides. Certainly there has to be understanding and adjustments from both sides. I have not seen a couple talk openly about boundaries at all. Like none of my friends ever said that, okay, I discussed boundaries or my setting up personal boundaries with my partner. I never witnessed any such communication. Have you, Rahul? Do you believe that people are consciously talking about their boundaries with their partners to have a better relationship? Uh, you're putting me under the spot right now. <laughs> well, it's been a long time since I've been into a relationship. In my past relationships, I did not know what boundaries were, so I did not get the chance to, to talk about them. But in my future relationship, I will definitely will. It will be like the number definitely. one thing. Yeah. Yes, yes, true. Yes, and I, I believe that talking about boundaries and making one another aware of why they are needed and how we can help is important. Um, yes, I just want to say one thing, Nishin, is that a lot of people come to me asking, but I've always been that way, so how am I going to set a new boundary? Hmm. It's very easy. You just say, hey, listen, um, I know that in the past I was I used to do this, whatever that behavior is, but I'm not comfortable doing this anymore. So I would really uh, appreciate if you respect my decision. As mm -hmm. simple as that. Right, right. There is a point raised here by Farouk He's saying there should not be rigid boundaries. Do you yeah, agree that's with what him? we were talking about, Farouk. Yes, exactly. They shouldn't yeah. be too loose and they shouldn't be too rigid. 
Exactly. Like we said, there have to be some negotiable boundaries that allow people some room so that they can make adjustments and come to some sort of agreements instead of staying in some kind of conflict resulting from setting up very rigid boundaries. And really, there is no one size fits all. Every couple, every person, every individual, individual has a different kind of mindset. So, but the basics are one, respect, give and take and listen and communicate. Yes. Agree with you, one hundred percent. All right, guys, you have to ask us more questions. We are waiting for you to let us know what's going <laughs> on in your mind. What are the things that you are facing in your relationships? Do you believe that setting boundaries has helped you in your life? You can share your story in the comments. I will play the comment and talk about it. At work, even boundaries with yourself. Exactly, you, you have, have a relationship with yourself. Right? Yes. One hundred percent. Yes, Farooq, I agree with this as well. We have a relationship with ourselves Perfect. as well. And we need boundaries. <laughs> yes, true. Perfect. Very true. So, uh, why self-care is important when it comes to a relationship with ourselves? And what are the boundaries that we set for ourselves? When it comes Generally. to self-care, bo both partners have to take care of themselves. Because if you do not recharge yourself, then how are you expecting to take care of your partner or if you have kids or if you have pets or whatever you have to take care of yourself to be able to be on a balanced level mentally physically uh, socially spiritually emotionally there are many aspects that demands from you to to be taken care of and that's one and two there will be less negative charges between the couple when both of them are taking care of themselves. There will be less boredom. There will be more things to talk about. And both of them will be winding down from their busy schedules without having to pressure themselves. Like, I do not have to depend on my partner to relax. Let me do that on my own have my own support system, my friends, my activities, my rituals, and then create something with my partner. This is why it's very important to have self-care because it recharges you, it fuels you with energy, it calms your mind, and it puts you in a very balanced place to be able to be in a healthy relationship because you cannot be everything for your partner. So that would be unfair for you and for your partner. Uh, for both. So me time is very important. Want to disconnect, to 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 be able to reflect on what you, who you are, what you want to do. Um, maybe if you're not feeling so well, at least you have also your, your own uh, kingdom to go to rather than just projected uh, on your partner. So um, by setting boundary, it could be as simple as telling your partner, hey, listen, so I'm the kind of person who needs two days a week to have my me time. Uh, how much time do you need on your own? Have that conversation. Um, on the weekends, do we have to spend them all of the weekends together? Or is it OK that each one of us would have his own weekend once per month or once every, bloom, uh, every now and then? It's very important. That, that brings me to the point that me time matters a lot. And your partner should respect that. If that is not there, your partner, your partner should respect, respect that. Happen. And you should encourage your partner to have his own me time as well. Because some couples in a relationship speaking, they do not know what me time is. So introduce them to what me time is. Have them have their own activities, their own hobbies, their own friends. Uh, boundaries could be also about the circle of friends that you surround yourself with. Your friends should not be my friends and vice versa. That's one common problem that I... I, I like it. <laughs> I like it. Your friends should not be my friends. And my friends should yeah. not be your friends. It's okay to like have a few could. common friends. They could. But of not they all can. friends should but be it's not obligatory. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Good. <laughs> that is a good tip. <laughs> yeah. All right. Sometimes having friends that are not your friends can actually lead to a conflict and fight. <laughs> so you have to well, understand how you're going to set this boundary and make your partner understand so that there are no fights. And still <laughs> communication. Communication. Exactly. I saw so so communication. True. So what are some good communication strategies that you are using? 
listening with your friends listening oh listening. so you mean that if if i'm a better listener i'm a good no. listener 100% to be very honest yes um so to give you an example communication is a give and take you know it depends on what we are talking about if we if you're coming to me and you want to share something very personal you want to open up about something you're going through and i'm not listening to you all all the time i'm just saying yes i know what you're talking about i went through the same thing this is not listening and this is not me being your supportive friend this is just me being selfish and talking about my own experiences rather than just being there for you consciously or unconsciously okay so listen, um, and when it comes to boundaries, as I said, just explain to that friend, um, hey, listen, I, I really like enjoy, I, mean, I really enjoy spending time with you, but today I'm really not feeling it. I'd rather be on my own and to have my me time. So let's meet when I'm relaxed or when we are both able to. As simple as that. Great. All right. Okay, thank you very much for wonderful advice and this uh, beautiful session. We look forward to seeing you soon again. Till now, take care and have a great day. You too. Bye. Bye.